Hello, this is Tim. This is uh, lesson number two. This is a uh, supplemental for the lecture that I'm going to give you in class, SolarWorks class. So, um, this is what we're going to work on today. Um, this is the handout I'm going to give you. What are we doing? We're doing, typically what we're going to do is we're going to work through different examples. And in each example, I'm going to add on an extra uh, trick or I'm going to make it a little bit more complex. And we'll just build it up each one of these sketches. So how many sketches have I got? Seven, eight. I'm going to do seven sketches, one at a time, and we'll just go through it. I'm going to probably introduce a little bit of three-dimensional um, extrusion or uh, revolving or something like that. So um, let's give it a lash. Uh, let me just move this over here just for one second. Here we go. Okay. So the first thing we're going to draw is this, this eye-shaped eye beam. And you can see there, I'm telling you, that the origin is going to be at the center point of these two center lines. So let's let's give that a go. So what do we do? We go new. You're going to have something like this, hopefully. New part. And then let's, let's just check down here at the bottom right-hand corner that we're working in millimeters, grams a second. So let me just show you. Down here, MMGS. And then I go start. Sorry, sketch. Then I create a new sketch. And then we'll go front plane. And that's where our origin is there. So I'm going to get, drop this down here, and I have a center line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a center line over here. And I'm going to draw another center line up here, like so. All right. And then what am I going to do now? I'm going to click on the center line, hold down the control key, click on the origin, and I'm going to use a midpoint relation. And what that does is it just puts that origin at the midpoint of the construction line, which is kind of what we want. And then I'm going to do the same here. Grab this center line, hold down the control key, click the origin, and I'm going to do midpoint as well. So what is this? This is just my zero, zero here, and I have two nice construction lines. So what am I going to do? I'm going to draw a T section, like so. And then I'm going to just mirror it across. Now, the proper way, really, of doing this would just be to draw this I section out. But I want to show you this mirror function. Now, anyone that has done AutoCAD or any type of drafting will have... You, you know what mirror is, but let's go through it anyway. Okay? So, I'm going to get a line. I'm going to start over here. And I'm just going to draw a T section. What's happening is, is SolarWorks is adding in all of these relations, like um, vertical, horizontal. It looks like that we want these two to line. Well, I'm after adding a, a coincident mate, which means that this point and that line will line up. Another way of doing that is, let me just delete that relation. It's just doing a collinear, and that's kind of what I would have taught you. So we'll just do a collinear mate. And what does that do? It means those lines will line up. Okay? And what is this? We know that it's... Oh, 70 from there to there, and then we have the 20. So I'll get a smart dimension from here to here. We make that 70. Okay. And then we'll get another smart dimension, and we'll make this 20. Okay. Now, hopefully, you're starting to realize that these lines go black because they're fully defined. Um, they're 70 away from the origin, and then we have 20... This line is 20 away from that. The rest of the lines are blue. Okay, and then we have a 20 here. So from here to there is 20. And then what's the other one? It's 160. Okay, now let's think about this here. Can I, can I, if I make this line and that line equal, that, that might help in centering it up. So let's give that a go. We make each of those equal. And then we need to do something with this. Um, the easiest, the, the best way now is just we're going to put a dimension in from that line to there. Or we're going to make it half. And that's 10. That's one way. Let me show you another way. Um, I'm just going to delete that dimension. And I'm going to click on one line. Click on the other line. And click on the um, center line. And I'm going to go symmetric. And what it does is it'll, it'll center that up each time. So if I make this 40, it stays in the center. And that's kind of nice. So you're going to like that. You're going to like that um, relation. 
So what's next? I want to mirror this over to the other side. So what's a mirror do? Let's let, we'll give it a lash. So mirror entities, entities to mirror here. I'm going to click on this line, that line. I'm just going to go through them. If I click the wrong thing, I can delete it here and then keep on going. And what we're going to do is we're going to mirror it about this line. And look what it does. It, it gives us a preview to say, look, this is what it's actually going to look like. So I'm going to go OK. Um, and that's it. That's what the mirror command does. So if you have, um, you know, a crazy geometry and you've done all this work on it and you don't want to have to redraw it again and you want to copy it across a line, you can just, we'll do it again, mirror entities. I can, I should be able to highlight it all. Then I can just mirror it across that line. Typically in engineering, an awful lot of shapes and features are, are symmetrical. So you, you would use the, the mirror command all the time. So that, that, it makes life a bit easier. So, but what do we do? Let's just move these dimensions out a little bit and tidy them up. And that's it. Um, that's it. Let's, so what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to go, exit the sketch and we're done with that okay so I don't want to show you any uh, three-dimensional stuff just yet but that was the first one and I wanted I want you to spend about 10 minutes just practicing that mirror this mirror entities business make sure you know that okay so let's have a look at the next one easy enough so um, this looks like I don't know like a pipe clamp or something now what are we going to do we're going to you might need to offset the original shape and try and use trim to draw this sketch. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll call this our origin here. We're going to draw two circles. So let's create a new part. Change it to be millimeters. Create a new sketch on the front plane. And let's have a look here for a sec. So we have 50 is the outside circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this outside circle and then this just this ledge here first. Um, again, let's draw two center lines. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why does he draw them away and then move them towards the origin? Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to just object track this origin. I'm not clicking anything, and I'm walking away. I'm just holding the mouse button. Now, can I... I can draw it like that, but then what I need to do is... That's not going to give me a midpoint relation if I click on it. What is it? Can I highlight over it and it'll actually tell me? No. Anyway, I'll click the line, hold down the control key, click the origin, and I'll make it a midpoint. And I'll do the same over here. What that does there is I'm after drawing the line and I'm after doing a coincident mate. What that means, it means it's locked into that origin, but it might not be a midpoint. You can see there that that's not a midpoint. So I'll click the line, click the origin, and I'm going to go midpoint, like so. And then we're going to draw two, a circle, aren't we? And what was it? The radius was 50. The radius is 50, but what? it's saying diameter. And a lot of people say, well, I just want to put down radius. It, it doesn't work that way. Whenever you have a full circle, 360 degrees, it will always give you, it will always want the diameter. If it's less than 360 degrees, it will want the radius. So let me show you. There's the diameter. Um, 300, uh, 163. I'm going to draw another circle, and I'm just going to. I'm, you, you should not trim at this stage. I'm just going to get. I, I'll go over it again, but I'm just going to get rid of a bit of this circle. Now, this is oh, 360 degrees of a circle. This is only 90 degrees. Now, hopefully, this says radius, or my point will have been completely wasted. It, it will. There it is. So, whenever it's less than, if it's if it's 359 degrees of a circle, it's going to always ask for the radius. A full circle, it always asks for diameter. That's the way it is. But you're saying to yourself, well, what, good, what use is this? I know my, my radius is 50. So what are we going to give it? We're just going to give it a diameter of 100. You multiply it by 2. Okay. And then we'll, we'll draw on this ledge. Now, typically with, a let, with some type of shape like this, I'm going to draw it away and then I'm going to drive it up to the circle. So I'm going to start somewhere over here and I'm going to walk it over to there and I'm going to connect it. Now, hopefully this is where this coincident relation will make some sense. So what does this relation mean? It means it's always going to stay horizontal. If I move this, 
that coincident mate will ensure that that line stays in touch with the edge of the circle and I'm going to do the same over here I'm going to say just line up with here bring it over and make sure that I get that coincident mate like so okay now let's add let's add a smart dimension or two so we know that this is 20 so I'll just go from there smart dimension from there to there and I'll make it 20 now how do I get these centered up again across that center line I'm going to click on one click on the other and click on the center line and symmetric okay lovely now what's next we have a, we have a 60 um, dimension here I'm going to yeah let's do this let's make this line and this line equal to one another so if one gets longer the other one gets longer and then we know that from that point there to the center of the circle is 60 and we have that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim this bit of a line and this bit of a line you'll see why now in a sec it, I want to trim the lines I did that fast Let's, let me just do that again a little bit slower this time so I click on trim entities and you'll think well what the hell are all these options you, power trim does it all okay but notice with power trim if I hold down the button I have I don't know what what is it it's, it's just a big tail or a big a big um, squiggly line but wherever that line touches it will trim it will cut wherever between that boundary and that boundary there like so and it just cuts it away without deleting the whole circle now let's go back we've drawn this outside section now what does this what does offset do if we have a shape and I click on offset entities and I click on the edge what it will do is it will take that geometry or that shape and it will either move it it will either copy it out of distance or it will copy it inwards a distance now we want this to be reversed and I think it's four millimeters is the is the distance like so and I'm gonna go okay and what it does is it just puts in this dimension if I need if I just messed up I can change that to be three I can change that to be four I can do whatever come on now there we go so what's next I'm just going to connect these lines so I'm making sure that I get that snap take your time with it and what do I have? I have what's nice about now is I have a fully enclosed contour what does that mean if I poured water into this thing it would just stay inside this shape essentially it's, it's a watertight shape there's no little gaps or anything like that and that's important what I want you to do now is that we're just going to play for a little bit. I'm going to save that sketch. Okay. And there it is there. Do you remember how do we get back into the sketch if we need to? We just double click on it. Well, you should. You will in, in your versions. But how do I get back in? I right click here. And I click on that button there. Edit sketch. And now I'm back in. I'm back in sketch mode. I click this button to save it. Save any changes. And now I'm back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go to features, and I'm going to go extrude. And it's now what does extrude do? It'll take this 2D shape and it will create a 3D object out of it. So it says right if you want to extrude, you need to click on an existing sketch. Which sketch are we going to use? And I go well we're going to use this one here, okay? And look what it does. It it pops out and it, it we're in this three dimensional view this isometric view and I'm holding down my mouse button and I'm rotating it around a little bit like so okay now let, let's look at this blind business if we want this to just blindly extrude we could extrude it 40 millimeters and I will just extrude it out like that another thing we could do is is we can go with this mid plane extrude and what it will do is it will mid it will extrude 20 in one direction and 20 in the, in the other direction now I want you to just start using this mid plane extrude I don't explain why we're going to use it later when we're doing assemblies so just get into the habit of using a mid plane extrude okay and we're just going to go okay takes a couple of seconds and now we have a nice 3d view that's that's called an extrude a boss extrude okay now let's say just for fun we're designing a hose clamp and what we're going to do is we need to put a bolt 
through that ledge there and we're going to tighten up that bolt and this will, will cause this clamp to compress. Now let's, let, let me ask you this, is that lip really big enough for a bolt? Let's say we want to add in, add another, I don't know, let's say we want to add another uh, 10 millimeters to it. How would we do that? Now, I'm holding down this middle mouse button and rotating a little bit, but I mentioned to you that this thing here is called the feature tree. Now, how many features do we have at the moment? We have one extrude. Now, if you ever open up a complex SOLIDWORKS model, you could have 100 features. Okay, so I'm going to hit this plus button a little bit, and you can see that this sketch is, is owned by this extrude. This extrude is using that sketch. So let's say we want to change that sketch. We can go right click and we can edit it. And now we're back here again. But what do we do? I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to go normal to. And then we'll just look dead on with the sketch again. Now let's say we wanted to add another 10 millimeters. We can change that dimension here and we can change that to be 70. And it will put, it'll, it'll extend that lip a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to go save sketch. I don't want to. If I press this X here, it will rem, it'll delete any changes that I've just done. I'm, I like this. I'm happy with this. I'm going to go um, save sketch. And what it does is it rebuilds it based on the, the sketch changes. Okay. I want to show you another little trick. Let's say we want we don't want people to we don't want people to cut their hands or get these sharp ninety degree edges here. We want to radi we want to radius those out. This is called a fillet. Now notice how we're working in the 3D sketch now. I'm going to go through all this again, but we're in the, this feature 3D, sorry, 3D feature area. I want you to click on fillet. We're, no, we're not in sketch mode right now at all. We're in feature mode. And I click on fillet and, you know, don't worry about this so much. Just let's leave it at a, as, a, as a constant radius. That 90% or... 99% of all the fillets I've ever done have been a constant radius fillet, okay? And let's, let's, let's click on this little green box, and let's click on this edge. What's so nice about this full preview is we can see, well, that's what it's going to look like. And I can click there. I can rotate this. I'm zooming in a little bit to make it easier to select. And I'm selecting. I can select them all in one go and have four fillets in the one feature and I just hit the green button, the green arrow. Now how many features have I got now? I have two of them. I have the first extrude and then I have the next fillet. Okay. So let's say I want to I want to drill a hole through here for a bolt. What do I need to do? I click on sketch and I create another I want to create a new sketch and it says right if you want to create a sketch you have to tell me which plane that you want me to put this sketch on. And we let's say we want to put it on right there. Okay, now what's after happening here? Um, basically, whatever you draw is going to be on this face. Now I'll show you. If I draw it out here, oh well, that's not on that face, Tim. You're lying to me. Uh, it is actually. Do you know it's actually lined up on that plane? Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hit the space bar, and I can either hit this face or I can go normal too. And look where we are. Now I'm going to get a circle for the hole and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it right around there and the center of this circle I'm gonna hold down the control key I'm gonna line that up I want that to be horizontal to the origin now what does that do if I grab it it will it will it will stay locked into the horizontal now what size do we want let's let's just pick a number it doesn't really matter we're just we're just playing here we make a 10 millimeters is the um, is the diameter okay and then let's have a dimension from here to here now why is this still blue first of all it's not fully defined we need a dimension uh, we need a dimension in the horizontal so let's make this um, 60 and it goes fully black it's fully defined we're in business let's save that and then let's rotate this down now what what do we want to do is that centered that ah, looks centered to me yeah we want to cut this hole in the, in, the, in the object. So I go back to features. Now if I click on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add material. I don't want to add material, I want to take material away. So I'm going to click on extruded cut. And look at this, look what it does. You can see what's going to happen, it's going to cut that out. 
Now what I can do is, is that going to work for me? If I hit, if I hit OK, yeah. It's just going to cut it out. So don't worry, I'm after, I'm after teaching you quite an awful lot there. But this is our feature tree. How many features have we got now? We have three features. What I can do is I can go back at any stage and I can edit that feature. I can make it, make it thicker if needs be, if it's not strong enough. I can right click on that sketch. I can change the thickness of the offset. If you think that plastic isn't strong enough, I can make this six. Now we're talking. And I can rebuild it and have a much more sturdier part. That's the real strength of SolarWorks. Okay? So I just want I want I want you to maybe if, if I were you, spend about fifteen minutes just playing around and just, just getting a bit of experience with each of those features. Okay? The next example we're gonna do is example number three, this um hairy looking piece. Okay? Um we're gonna use something called a circular array. Okay, so let's have a look at example number three. Um, my plan is to draw a circle. Now it looks like it's a diameter of a hundred. Um, I'm going to draw one set of these, what I would call Mickey Mouse ears, and then I'm going to array them. I'm going to do something called a circular circular array. You're going to like that. So we get six, and then I'll do these slots. Okay, so circle first. Then we're going to do one Mickey Mouse ear. I'll array them. And then we'll do these three slots. Now, where's the origin going to be? They're telling you to put it 70 and 70 from the center of the circle, but it's just silly. We're going to put our origin right there, okay, right in the center of the circle. That's what you're always going to do. So, let's create a new part. Let's change it to be millimeters. I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. And let's have a look here. Let me just move this thing here. You know, this is actually recording the, the little lesson, so I don't want to click by accident. Now, what is it? It's a diameter of 100. Okay. So, I bring my cursor over to the origin, and I click on it, and now I have a coincident relation. So what does that mean? It means the center is locked into the origin. And I put a diameter of 100, like so. So this, that diameter is 100. And then, whoops, I'm going to put in two circles, two full circles. And what sizes are they? They're radius 10 and diameter 10. So, I, I highlight over the center. I bring it over here. I'm going to draw two circles. So, one's a diameter of 10. And then what's, what am I going to say? One, then the radius of 10. What am I thinking here? Diameter 10 and then diameter 20. Now after doing that a little bit fast, my brain is, is, is daydreaming here. Diameter 10 and then it will be di diameter 20. So I can see how that would be easy enough to screw up. And that looks, does that look right? Yeah, it looks about right. We can always change it anyway. Um, part of me wants to draw a center line from there out for some reason. I don't know why, but that's what my brain is telling me. And and we can see that we have a full circle and then we trim that bit of it off. So so let's trim it. And I'm going to delete that bit of it away. Come on there. I don't know why that's been a tall pain. I need to exit out of the trim business and, and delete it and I'll be left with that. Okay. It's five o'clock now. I think my, my think I'm getting a bit hungry now at the moment. My brain isn't thinking it's not, it's not doing that great. Okay. Anyway, I have one Mickey Mouse here. And um is it in the right place? Everything looks good. I'm gonna array it. Now you could you could do this six times, but that's a total waste of time. Or you could come over here to circular sketch pattern. Now, what was I calling that? I was calling it something else, but it's a circular sketch pattern. Other programs call it a polar array, stuff like that, but we want it. It's a circular sketch pattern. Anyway. Now, you're going, what the hell is all of this here? What's going on here? The first place you want to start off is this entities to pattern business. And we click on that. Wherever we click here, you can see that it's highlighted. And I'm going to click on the circle, and I'm going to click on the, the curve. 
and SOLIDWORKS is smart enough it what it does here this section here is the center point the center of rotation now it's after taking the origin and you know if it, if it's screwed up you could delete that and you could pick it something else but look it is the origin okay and what is it we want to have equal spacing 360 degrees and we want six of them and it looks something like that and I'm going to go okay now the one thing the one thing with SOLIDWORKS is whenever it arrays something, it never really locks it down. You can see there that it's after doing a circular array, but they're all blue. Now, why are they all blue? Because, believe it or not, when we picked that point, we just it didn't lock in. Now, can, now if, if I can grab that, can I move? I'm, I'm going to press Control-Z to undo, and I'm going to see, can I move that? No. So, I don't know if you can see it, but that point there is the center of rotation. I'm going to see if I can grab that and move that. No. Come on there now. That's funny. As soon as I move it, it locks into place. Um, let me undo that and let me see if I can... What else I can do? Let's try it again. I'm going to click on Circular Sketch Pattern. Entities the pattern. I want to array that one and that one. I wish there was a button here that said um, we could lock it into place. Dimension the radius, dimension the angular space, and I don't know if I want all that. Let's try move this up to six and go OK. OK. Now, if I grab this point, can I move it? I can't move it. If I drag that, it won't let me move it. Um, what, I, what I did here just to, so that you can lock it in place is you can click on one of these center points of a circle and move it, grab it and then bring it back and it should lock into place. Uh, I, can ch I can click this button here and change its, um, the number that I want to array quite easily. So we just want six. And then you're saying, well, what the hell is going on, Tim? Do I have to re-trim all of those? And the answer is yes. So I, I use the power trim, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim around it. I'm going to delete that. You'll see what I'll do in a sec. I'll delete that, delete that. And then I have to go back. Now, I'm, I trimmed them first, and then I delete them. I'm using the delete key. I hope I'm... Hope I didn't confuse you there. So trimming will cut those those tails away. Once you've done that, you can just actually delete the rest of it. Now, is that is that a little bit big? No, it looks about right. Okay. So I drew the circle. I drew one Mickey Mouse here. What's kind of nice about this is if I change any of those and I change that to seven point five, it should change them all. Okay. Now, um. If you're, if all of this is black and it might not be exactly the same as I have it, don't never use um, this fixed relation. There's, n there's no reason for you to do it. It's a mugs game. It's, it's a very bad habit to get into. Okay. Um, so right, what's next? Um, we, I want to draw one of these. So we're gonna, what are we gonna do again? We're gonna draw a slot, one curved slot, and then I'm gonna circle array it. So there's quite a few different ways of doing this, but I'll just tell you how I draw it. Um, I'm going to draw an angular line up, an angular center line. Something like that. Now what is it? It's 30 degrees from the horizontal and then 45 degrees from that angular line. Okay? So it's 30 degrees from the horizontal and then it's 45 from there like so so I'm doing I'm doing essentially a bit of construction lines here kind of and what I'll do then is I'm going to draw in two full circles two circles where they lie and they're radius 5 so it's a diameter of 10 now before I do that I need this uh, construction circle which is a diameter of 70. So I get in here, 
I'm going to just do a normal circle what is it it's a diameter of 70 and I'm going to click on the circle and then I'm going to go for construction so whenever you have constru a construction circle or a construction line or anything like that, don't use real lines because when you're doing an extrusion or you're starting to actually use them, they will take those lines into, the, into consideration and that cannot always be good. So if it's construction, make sure it's dashed. Now, now I have the center point of each of those um, circles. Now, do you remember what size they were? They were uh, diameter 10. Now look at this. No, look at the look at the, the, how the icon changes. That's a coincident relation. Watch it, watch it. Now I have an intersection, and that's what I'm looking for. I want an intersection between the two lines. All right, watch it, watch it, watch it. Why is it being a pain? Sometimes you actually have to hover over the two things that you want to to get it to wake up to. There it is, that's your intersection. Okay, now watch this. If I try and move that, it won't move because it's locked into that intersection. Um, let me, is there another way that I could do that? If I delete one of the circles and I just draw it out here and I click there, I click the center, then I click the circle and then I click the line. Does it give me an intersection? Ah, that's nice, I've never done that before. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make both of these circles equal to one another. And then I'm going to make it diameter of, of 10. And I have that. Um, now let's see, does this work? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start here from the origin. And I'm just going to draw a circle. And I'm going to do it that it's a tangent to the other circle. And I'm going to do the same again. Something like that. Now what do I need to do? Now I need to trim all of this. So I'll trim and trim. I, you do ha have problems using this method sometimes, but let's, then I'm just gonna delete the rest of that away. Now I've deleted that and what's happened is, is I think, um, let, me, let me just keep trimming this for a second and let's see where we get to. Just keep trimming it. Now it's saying that it's overdefined. What, ba uh, what may relation is giving me that? Now, in this situation, what we do is we delete what is ever, whatever is red. And I, del I just started with the, one of the red relations and everything is good, a good again, happy days. Um, can I change this? So let me see if I can change this to be 65. It pulls it in, that's good, 70. Um, okay, so now I have a slot. Uh, a curved slot. I did that by drawing two full circles and then two big circles, tangent circles around them. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Now what do we need to do here? I'm going to array them 120 degrees from each other. So I go again to circular sketch pattern, entities to pattern. I'm going to pattern that, that and the two circles. And then I'm going to go, I just want three Okay, equal spacing, 360 degrees, I'm going to go okay. And it's overdefined. Now what? Again, um, the, the best thing I can say for you is, is, is we have too many relations. I'm going to delete this. Um, I'm going to start with the red relations. And now it's all underdefined. So we just moved one. We deleted that. Um, can I, can I move this around? It doesn't like that. Um, can I delete this thirty? It added it added that dimension in there for some reason. I'm going to delete that thirty, and it works. Um, that's pretty, it's kind of complicated stuff. Um, see how you get on, the, you know, it, that, it's a pretty tricky sketch. Um, you know, if you're having major trouble with that, um, 
you know send me an email um i don't know what more i could show you but that's it step by step um it's a, it's probably the trickiest one in the whole packet the next one is a piece of cake compared to it okay um but what are we doing there we're practicing that circular array business so the first one we practice the mirror second example we practice the offset third example we practice a circular array and then the fourth we're just going to do a mirror with some fillets okay so let's give that a lash so um, we save the sketch what I'd like you to do is is whenever you're doing your homework is is let's see what happens can we can we go to file print preview and that's what it's going to look like so print that out stick your name on it whatever I'm going to give you something about six or seven sketches to do for homework and print save them print them out and um, you're going to be marked on that All right, let's have a look at um, example number four. My plan is to uh, is to create the origin right here at the center of the semicircle. I'm going to draw half of this shape, and then I'm just going to mirror it over the other side. So that's what I want to do. I'll I'll start with a new part. Create a sketch front plane. I'm going to draw a circle. So before I do that, I'm going to change this to be millimeters. What is it? We've a <coughs> 160 degree, 160 uh, diameter. Excuse me. All right. Okay, um, 120 millimeters diameter. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to draw um, that center line, and I'm going to make it a midpoint on that origin. Okay. So what should I do here? Every circle. Let me think about this for a second. Every circle has four quadrants. It has a 12 o'clock, a 6 o'clock, uh, a 9 o'clock, and a 3 o'clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the, the 9 o'clock. I'm going to come over. I'm going to come down. And let's think about this for a second. Um, forget the fact that there's a fillet here, that there's a little curve. I'm going to come over. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come over and up like so. Excuse me, I'm after eating a very spicy dinner, and uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's uh, causing me to, to choke a little bit here, so sorry about that. Um, okay, let me think about this. Um, we know from the center all the way down, it's rough, it's 80. So, I'll put that in. 80. Okay, and then what's the distance from here to the center? It's going to be 180. Now you're going to like this. I can do this. I can go from here to here, and I can make that 180 divided by 2. Or I can just go from there to the center line, and then if I well, look what happens, that's just half of it. That's the that's the um, the diameter measurement, or the 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 um, that that'll be the 180. So I'll put that in there, and it moves it over. And let's have a look for a few more dimensions. We have one here, uh, 10. It comes up 10, and then it comes over. I'll put that in. I'm going to show you a trick as well at this. I think it's time I showed you this. Um, what I can do is I can right-click my mouse, and what happens in this new version is SOLIDWORKS. These are like, whenever I right-click, um, this uh, this is like a quick access. No, I'll do it again. If I right click and move up with my mouse, I can get a dimension really quickly. If I right click and left, I get a line. If I right click and right, I get a circle, and right click and down, I get a square. So these are things right click and up. See if you can do it. If you can't figure that out, you're just going to have to come over here each time. Right click and up. Now I can do smart dimension quite quickly. Alright, 
Now this this radius is 20. Now let's see if I can if I can add that in. So I have a fillet of 20. Now, okay. So this is a, let's do this 120 first. So watch this. I can get my dimension really quickly there. From there to there is 120. Let's try that again. Okay. 120, alright, and then I have a radius of 20. So what do I do? I'm going to get a fillet here, I'm going to go 20, and then I'm going to go from here to there, and I'm going to go OK. And now I have that nice curve, that nice little fillet, essentially. And then I have a circle, now what's the circle? It's a diameter of 20. OK, now in this example, the circle is concentric with a fillet. What does that mean? So if I put the circle in, roughly around there, what does concentric mean? Concentric means they both share the same center point. Now where is the center point of the fillet? It's right there. So I can click on that curve. Look, you can move this over there like that and it will work just fine. It will make it concentric. Or I can click on this curve, hold down the control key, click the fillet, and I can make them concentric. And then what's its diameter? It's diameter 20. And that's it. Now let me see here, is there anything else? We have these little fillets. Now I don't think I actually gave you the fillet, this little this little curve here, but let's let's try something. Let's give it um let's give it five. That's perfect. Okay. Um now what's next? I'm gonna trim this bit of it away and that and I have this, this I'm left with that uh, quarter of a circle and I'm going to mirror it across the center line so I'm going to go mirror I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to mirror it around this, this um, center line I'm going to go OK and I'm left with that any changes I make on this side will be the same on that side so let's watch, watch this I'm going to make this 25 changes both sides. Just print, press Control Z there to undo the other side. Now I'm going to save my changes to my sketch and let's make this uh, a 3D part. So I'm holding down the mouse button and I'm going to go Features, Extrude Box Base, I'm going to go to Mid Plane and I'm going to make this 50, 50 millimeters. And I'm going to go OK. And that's it. OK. So what are you going to do? You're going to go edit the sketch. You're going to hit the space bar. We're going to look at this. When, just to show you again, when you're doing your homework, let's move the dimensions a little bit closer. And let's go to File, Print Preview, and print that out for me so I can see it, so I know what you're doing. That's it. Um, that is example number four. So let's look, example, let's look at example number five. We're nearly there. So example number five is two circles, two full circles, and one of these one of these little arms sticking out. And what we're going to do is we're going to array this one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to array that eight times, and we're going to turn off the twelve o'clock and the six o'clock. So how do we do that? So I don't need this anymore. I go file new. Okay change my dimensions to millimeters, create a sketch on the front plane, and what are my two circles there? 60 and 80. So let's put down two circles. Let's make the outer one 80. Let's make the inner one. And what I'm going to try and do is I prefer this leader type um, dimension so when I'm, when I'm moving kind of fast if I'm moving too fast I get a dimension like this I'm looking for this type of dimension and I want it's a leader instead of the two arrows it's just one arrow so 60 and 80 I'm going to put in a center line from the origin and I need to come out so I'm going to, I'm going to need a construction circle here and it's a radius of 60 so, 
I get a circle, I click on it, I go for construction, and I go diameter 120. And I'm going to take my time again, and I'm going to put in a proper dimension like so. And on this side, so this is called a bolt circle diameter. That means that all the holes are on lie on this circle. So, well, let's have a look. We have a radius 10 and a diameter 10. So, this is going to be diameter 10, and this is going to be diameter 20. And then what do I need to do? I need to draw, okay, I need to draw a pair of horizontal lines over to that. And that's going to be from the 12 o'clock quadrant and the 6 o'clock quadrant. Now let me think about this for a second. And then what I'll do now is I, I know enough that I need to trim this bit of it away. Okay. Now, let's have a look. Hmm. And I'm going to trim this bit of it away as well. Now, I'm going to array this a total of eight times. And I'm going to go, uh, let's have a look here. Circular sketch pattern. And what entities do I want to pattern? I want to pattern this line, that line, the circle, and the arc. And you can see there, it's smart. It picks up the origin as the center point. Now we have, now does that actually look right? If I have six, no, see the angle isn't right. That's at 45 degrees there, when this is at 30 degrees. So I need to add another two. Okay, and then what I can do then, is I can come down here and I can go instances to skip. And I click on this, and what does it do? It gives me these little pink um, buttons. And I'm gonna click on that one. And I'm going to click on that one, and now you can see it's it's it gives me the pattern that I want, but I can actually manually turn uh, instances off, and that's it. Now let's have a look here for a sec. If I now what's going on here? Yeah, it looks like I'm after patterning some stuff that I really shouldn't. I don't. I'm not quite ready yet. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to zoom in here and get get those little tails. I didn't I didn't trim them very well, and let's go down to the bottom. Let's try that again. Okay. And let's okay, so what are we gonna do? Circular sketch pattern, entities pattern. I'm gonna select all of this. No, I have to actually manually go in there and grab it. And I'll get my instances to skip. Now let's bump this up to eight again. Let's turn those two off. And I'm going to go OK. And of course, it's not fully defined. Now, if I grab, what did we do here? If I grab this, it won't move. Okay, if I let's see if I can grab one of these and pull it back into the circle. No, it doesn't like that either. Um, so what are you going to do? What 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 are your what is your instinct telling you? My instinct is telling me to get rid of that forty. And it works. Um, it I feel like it adds that in, and I don't. I don't know why it does that, but you can change the, the number here. A, it will adjust the instances. You can change that. What else? That, that's not going to change the angle. Um, well, that's it. Is that, what, what else are we missing here for a sec? Yeah, we need to trim all of this. So we get our power trim. Not quite done yet. And that's it. Okay. So if you've done a good sketch, and there's no little gaps here or anything, or little uh, tails here from your, if you haven't trimmed it correctly. Let's save the sketch, and let's try and extrude it. So when we extrude, it works off the bat. We've got to go down to mid-plane, and let's make it 75 millimeters. Okay. And that's it. So that's part number five. Okay, example number five. Let's look at example number six and seven. Now these are slightly different. All of these are just simple extrudes. What we're going to do here is we're going to use something called a revolve. 
you will use the revolve feature for this one. Now, whenever you see stuff like this, believe it or not, all you have to do is draw just one side of it, and then you rotate it around. Okay, where's a good place to put the origin in this example? Um, it doesn't really matter. Do you see right? Do you see in the middle of this? Um, what would you call it? It looks like a, a lamp vase or some sort of a lamp shade or something. There's a center line right in the middle there. At the very bottom of that center line, let's put. That's where we'd have our origin. So, let's give it another. Uh, let's give it a go. We'll get a new part. I'll go sketch from plane. I'm going to go millimeters. And I'm going to probably have to create a new sketch again. So we have a millimeter sketch. And I'm going to go center line. And I'm going to create a center line from the very um, from the origin. And I'm going to I'm going to have a, a vertical one and I'm going to have a horizontal one. So let's have a look here. We have um, what is it? It's about oh, 270. So I'm just going to sketch this. So it's roughly 270. It comes over, comes down, comes at an angle, I think. Let's have a look. Uh, no, I'm having a hard time rem remembering this. It comes out horizontal. And then what's it look like? It comes down at an angle. And then it comes down vertical. Comes down at an angle, comes down vertical, comes over, and then it's just, um, yeah, I can even remember this. Now it's something like that. Let's have a look again. I think it is. Um, Alright, what's this bottom dimension? 160. So we get smart dimension. I click on the edge. Click on the center line, and my advice to use these center line dimensions, okay? So instead of dividing it by two, we can just bring it over to the left a little bit, and we know that this is 160. Okay? And then we know that the hole going all the way through it is 20. So what did I tell you? Whenever you're using the revolve, you probably don't even know what the revolve command is yet, you, all you need to do is just draw half of it. Okay? Let me have a little drink of tea here. Okay. Um, and then we have 100 here, diameter 100. I'll just keep on going up 160. Now what I can do here is I can go this line, because they're both the same, I can make them collinear to each other. So we have 160, 160 there, we have 60, and then we have 100. What's the height of this thing? The height is 270. So from there to there is 270. And then it's 40. Okay. Just let's tie up the dimensions a little bit. And then we have the 30 the 80 and the 30. So what I'm going to do is, let's start, what am I doing here? Right clicking and then just bringing the mouse, dragging the mouse up. So 30, 80, and 30. And everything goes black. Okay, it's fully defined. It has all the numbers it needs. So watch this. I'm going to exit out of my sketch. And, you know, if I want to get back into sketch mode, I just right click and hit the top left button, ex edit sketch. I'm going to exit the sketch now. I'm going to go to features, revolve boss base, and it says, right, if you want to revolve, can you tell me a sketch? 
and you have to kind of care, care for this if I click on this sketch it does two things it picks the sketch and look what it does it, its axis of revolution is the line that I picked on the sketch now just be aware that if I was if I knew what I was doing I would have clicked that line there so what I'll do is I'll delete this axis of revo revolution and I'm going to pick this line and look what it does it revolves all the way around now is that what I want I'm going to go OK and look at this why doesn't it have a hole so let's go back and let's look at that revolve a little bit more closely and I think the axis of revolution that we want is our original centre line now that will do what it'll, it'll cause us to have a hole going all the way through it now this is a shape that's revolved now if anyone has ever done woodworking before you've ever used a lathe tip it's the same for metal metals when you're making metal work you have a mill and you have a lathe and the lathe is for these revolved parts okay so I think I've, I've given you enough to be dangerous um, I'm, I'm also getting a bit lazy now uh, example 7 you should be able to do um, it should be possible uh, these are easy parts here you're probably going to do those for homework nothing too challenging we just we just advance the sketches a little bit more next week after this we're going to be moving on to like all 3d you know so the 3d parts are going to start building them up but you've done enough um, sketches I think you're you're you can definitely say you're good at sketches at this stage so um, I'll see you next week